Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to part two of the pet system series. So part one, which was last episode, I taught you how to make the egg hatching system. Now in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make the, the inventory system, the data store system, and maybe the pet movement, but I'll see if, the, if I have enough time for that. So let's get started. So let's start with the inventory system. So I just made this UI. Let me show you some key points that you have to have in your UI. So for starters, we want a text button called open inventory this will be the button that toggles the inventory and then we want a frame called inventory this will be where the pets are stored so you can make this look however you want but what you want is a frame and then you want a scrolling frame inside of that frame inside of here there's a template now this template is actually a viewport frame inside of the template we have two different instances we have a text button which will be used to toggle the pet and we have a text label which shows the pet name so you want to make sure to add both of these um, and name them as they are over here um, and then we could start coding now so we want to open up a pet client in here this is the code from last episode which by the way if you did not watch last episode you're gonna have to watch it before watching this so that will be linked first link in the description so what you want to do is you want to start by making a few variables so let's start with local player is it with the game players local player and then we want to write local um, inventory is equal to script.parent.inventory and now you're going to want to make a new function so you'll type local function update inventory and now inside the function we're going to want to make a loop so for underscore pet in pairs okay so actually before we do this we need to do something else so let's go to the pet server script inside of here the player added event we want to copy the leader stats and paste it here and we just want to change it to pets so we want it to be a folder and we could copy this and just we'll write pets.name is equal to pets so there we go so we want to create a new folder and call it pets now over here we could create another variable we could call this local pets is equal to player wait for child pets right over here in the for i loop for underscore pet in pairs pets get children do now I'm gonna actually call this pet folder because I'm probably gonna confuse the pets and pet a lot. <laughs> Let's just name it pet folder for now. So now inside of this loop, we are going to want to check if this, this loop is going to be used for obviously creating the different templates, which will be um, showing the pet you have. So we want to check if you if it already has a button for your pet. So we want to write if not inventory dot scrolling frame to find first child pet dot name uh, then so what we're doing here is we're checking if there is or if there isn't because we added a not over here if it doesn't find a instance inside of the scrolling frame with the pet name if we let's say had a red dominus and we had a image over here called red dominus it won't continue going because it did find the pet name over here but let's rename this back to template and let's continue so we want to write local template and then we want to get a path to our template so for me it's um, inventory.scrollingframe.template and we want to clone it um, now over here we want to make the basic property so template.parent is equal to inventory.scrollingframe template.visible is equal to true and template.name is equal to pet.name so that is the default properties i guess now we want to make like the visuals so we'll type local pet clone is equal to game dot replicated storage dot pets find first child pet dot name there we go so what we're doing here and we want to write clone is we're going to our folder over here in replicated storage that contains all of our pets and we are going to find the pet that we're looking for now because i used a viewport frame over here we need to make it work the viewport frame so before i show you how to script it let me show you how to make a viewport frame if you know how to make viewport frames and cameras then you can do that on your own but if not a really good way to make one is using a plugin called viewport frame editor i will link this in the description so what you want to do is download the plugin enable it and then grab any of your pets, put it in workspace and press insert. There we go. Now you want to 
position this pad actually you want to press x you don't want to insert it yet you want to position this pad zero 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 and you want the orientation of the pad i know it's inside of some parts right now but it doesn't matter and you want the orientation of the pad to be zero 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 you want it to be completely zero 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 everything but the size now once it's there you can press insert and then you could see the, you could see the pad over here so what you want to do is you want to get a good angle on it like if you want your pet to be a little slanted in the viewport frame, you can do that. I'm actually going to keep mine. Yeah, I'm going to make mine a little slanted. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to do this, position this, and there we go. Now I press check and there we go. So I have my UI. You could delete the pet after that. I have my UI disabled, but it created a UI right here. So right here, viewport frame output, viewport frame, and there we go. So... What you want to do is you want to copy this camera or you don't have to copy it you could drag it over to this template over here and then you could delete this viewport frame output now inside of the template you want to search up current camera and the properties and you want to set the current camera to the camera we just put into here and then we could delete it after you set it and it should stay there that's how you make a viewport frame remember that that camera is set to zero 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 so you're gonna have to position the pets to zero 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 which we'll do right now so let's start with pet clone that parent is equal to template because we need to put the pet itself inside of the viewport frame. Then we'll write pet clone dot position is equal to vector three dot new. And just in case we'll type pet clone dot orient orientation is equal to vector three dot new zero zero zero. All right, and then we want to write template dot pet name dot text is equal to pet um, pet.name there we go so let me update you guys on what we're doing here so we made a function and then we're inside the function we're looping through the player's pet folder which will contain all the pets the player owns and then if we do not find the pet inside of the ui we create a new ui for the pet we parent the ui we make it visible we give it a name and then over here we're getting the actual pet clone from replicated storage and we're putting it inside of the viewport frame this way you could see it and we're positioning it this way it's in the view of the camera. And then here we're just setting the pet name. Actually, we want to fire the event, the function. So at the bottom of the script, you're going to want to type update inventory and also pet folder dot child added connect function and update inventory so this way it fires whenever you join the game and whenever a pet is added so technically you don't need this because when you join you have pets added but it's better off if you just have this as well and i just remembered i forgot to script this inventory button so let's do that really quickly we want to write script.parent.openinventory dot mouse button one click remember open inventory is this button right here we want to write if inventory.visible is equal to false um, then inventory.visible is equal to true, else inventory.visible is equal to false. This is really simple. We detect when you click on the button, then when you click on it, if the inventory is visible, then it makes it invisible, and if it's invisible, it makes it visible. That's all it does. And that should be it for the pets client script. So now we have to script one more thing for the inventory, and then we should be all done. So over here in the egg hatching system, we want to add a new part so over here we can write if player dot pets find first child new pet dot name uh, then we can write player dot pets find first child new pet dot name dot value plus equals one else we want to write local number value to go to instance dot new number value and we want to put that inside the player's pets folder and we want to set the number value name to the new pet name and the number value itself to one so what we're doing over here we're checking if the player has the pet inside of his pets folder if he does we're adding one to its value so like the value shows how many of the pet he owns and then if he doesn't have the pet we give him the pet so let's test it out. So before we join, I'm going to actually set my cache to 1000 and now I'm going to press play. All right, so we're in the game now. Now, if I click the inventory button, it works just fine. There you go. Now, if I hatch an egg, um, actually, let me show you right here. Pets, I have no pets. So if I hatch an egg, there we go. I just got a golden dominus. So it's called golden um, and you see my value is one. So if I hatch another one, 
I have two now. If I hatch a red one, I'll do that in a minute. But let's check our inventory. There we go. So we have the golden dominus. Now, if we hatch the red one, you'll see how it gets added. There we go. Red inventory and there we go perfect so this will work with all the different pets you have now right now the equip isn't scripted that we'll do later or maybe next episode okay so now let's script the data store like so we can actually save the player's pets so i have a whole video explaining how to use data stores that will be on screen right now i'm going to create a really simple one i'm not going to explain it because as i said i have a whole video on it if you want to learn about it watch the video so we're going to write local data store service is equal to game get service data store service and we want to write local data store is equal to data store service get data store and then we want to write a string in here. Now the string inside of here, you don't want to tell anyone because they could use it to basically change their data. Better off, don't tell anyone this string. It's kind of like a password for your data store. Now that we have these variables, we want to script a p call function. So we'll write local success fail is equal to p call function. What a p call function does, basically what's written inside of it won't error. And if it does, it won't stop the script. It'll tell you what's wrong. So in here, we'll type data store, um, get async um, player dot user ID dot dot data. So this is your key. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name mine player dot user ID data. Over here, we want to write if success, then else, meaning if, it, if it's not successful, if there was an error, it failed then we can write warn um, error loading data and uh, we can write the error message over here so it's fail because the fail is the error message by the way like if there is one now what we want to do we want an, a new variable the new variable we'll put over here and we'll do local data object so let's let's actually not put it here let's put it right there um, and we'll also save the cache since we're making a data store we'll also save the cache while we're here data object is equal to zero and then a table so this will be the cache and then the pets now over here we want to change this to be data object is equal to data store get async um, just change that to this here we want to write if data object then here we would load the cache so if data object one then cache dot value is equal to data object one um, and then here we have pet. So if data object two. So this is a little more complicated. So let me just explain really quickly. So we want to loop through the pets. So for pet amount in pairs data object two do. So the first parameter, I guess, is the pet name, and the second would be how many like pets you own. And we will write if pets find first child pet, then pet dot value is equal to amount what we need to write is if not pets fine for child pet this way if we still don't have the pet in our pet folder copy what you wrote over here and paste it here and just change new pet dot name to pet and change one to amount and this you can just change the pets so that's all of the data loading done and we need to actually save the data so over here we want to make a new function a new event game.players.player removing connect function player we want to write a bunch of the same stuff over here i actually wrote data wrong data there we go so we're going to write local um data object so again we could set that to zero and then a table now we want to set this to player.leaderstats.cache.value right that's what i named it cache yeah and then a table that's what we want to do then we want to write for um underscore pet in pairs player dot pets get children do so we're going to loop through the player's pets again we're going to write um data object two and then we want to create a new one so pet dot name is equal to pet dot value so we're creating a new instance inside of the table over here and then we could write the actual data store. So local success fail is equal to p call function, same as before. And instead of writing data object is equal to data store get async, we're gonna write data store set async. Now we wanna give it the key. So the key is the player user ID. Um, and then we want the second parameter to be the data object. Um, now, of course, change this to whatever you set your key to. I recommend just doing player.user ID 
dot dot data. Then here we'll write if success, then print saved data successfully. And then else we can warn um, error saving data. And then we could have the fail message as well. And that should be it. Let's test it out. So if I go to the data store editor right now, this is a plugin that costs Robux. It's a great plugin though. There are no data stores right now. So if I press play, because I just made a data store, it should create a data store. Or well, actually it's that API rejected. That's because we need to enable API services over here. So go to your game settings, security, API services, enable it and press save. All right, so I joined the game itself now because um, data doesn't always save inside a studio, but I'm going to give myself data inside of the game itself and I'm going to leave and rejoin and see if my data saved. So I'm going to give myself 500 cash. I have no pets. I'm going to buy two golden pets, right? There we go and one red pet and now if i leave now if i join in studio i should have the data although it might not load in studio but i have a plugin to load data but there we go yeah i have 350 cash and i have the red and golden egg and i should have one red and two gold right two gold one red so there we go perfect and there you go you can see data saved successfully in studio i just want to let you know as well that once this system is all done i will be putting it up for sale so check the comments it will be the pinned comment once the whole system is done and released quick overview of what we did we made the ui we made the data store um we made the inventory and that's about it and also please don't comment um oh it's not working because it does work if it's not working for you then you did something wrong um maybe you did your ui wrong maybe you wrote something wrong in the script but it does work so please don't comment that it doesn't work because those comments are just really annoying and misleading all right thanks for watching if you made it this far please like it really helps out a lot and if you're new make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you get notified when the next part episode series thing releases all right thanks for watching bye